Way longer ago than it should have been, Newbie Drone sent me their Invisa 360 drone for review. This thing's actually been out for quite some time now, and I have not gotten around to making it. However, in the last couple months, a couple different companies have asked me if I had a drone that can carry a 360 camera, and I said, hey, I've got the perfect thing. I've actually taken this out on a couple of jobs, used it to film in 360 for a couple of different things, and I wanted to share my findings with you having done these gigs, and then also kind of demonstrate for you how this works, how it combines with the Insta360 Studio software and what I do and don't love about it. So without further ado, let's get into the Invisa 360 from Newbie Drone. Before we get too far into this review, I think a quick overview of some of the parts would be really useful. Right down here, you have the Infinity 200 F4 flight controller, and it's paired with their Infinity 200 4-in-1. I believe it's a 40 amp 4-in-1 ESC on the 20 by 20 mounting platform. That's what the 200 stands for. I've used this in a number of my different filming rigs. And it's really, really simple and nice because it plugs and play directly with DJI FPV and just works really well for that. So I actually really like the Infinity 200 stack. Then for motors, you've got these Flow 2004 1750 KV motors. And then you have these Gemfan D76 propellers, which are nice and meaty. They have a lot of grip. I think we could probably, you know, having played with this for a little while, had it on a couple gigs, I think that we could probably use with a little bit of a boost in KV, like something like a 1900 or a 2000 might be a little bit better, but for the most part, really, really liking this setup. The receiver, VTX, and camera are all part of this Cadex Vista that's here in the back. It's the full-size one, the normal one, so it works really well. I have had absolutely no problems with video on this, even with just the one antenna, which conveniently fits between the two carbon fiber plates. So the antenna is so small and mounted in a way that it does not show on the lens of the camera, which is perfect. And then finally, this uses two four cell 650 batteries that stick in on the sides here, balancing out left and right. And then the weight of everything else is front and back. Other than that, you've got some nice little like aluminum spacers here that are holding the two pieces of the frame together. Look really good, like very custom built little things. Uh, you've got this 3D printed mount that holds in the Insta360 as well as the plastic cover to protect the bottom lens. Um, you don't use this while you're flying, but obviously it protects it when you're sitting it on the workbench. And there's this other custom piece of electronics that's built in here that actually carries the USB-C information from the actual Insta360 as well as powers the Insta360 while it's in flight. So that's a pretty cool, awesome little feature there. You can kind of see it down in there. So all in all, super A plus on the design of this build. Love the two battery situation, even though it's a little bit more of a pain, but it balances out the weight a little bit better. Uh, it's super durable. It feels like it's going to bonk into anything. It's nice and easy to catch. So like you have to catch it to, so you don't scratch the bottom lens, but it's really easy to just grab it like this. Or um, I was, I've been launching it, holding it like that kind of uh, a couple different options for that, which, you know, things like that really help make a product like this work really well. <laughs> look how, I just love how perfectly centered it is around the lens. Like, look at that. It's <laughs> just right there in the middle. Whee! This is a felt bottom, so it's not scratching anything. Don't worry. Okay. So let's go through assembly on this bird. So in addition to your Insta360 Go in our 360 mode, you want to have the top holder for the camera, which is going to end up going over top of the lens section, leaving the screen exposed. And the whole thing is going to drop in place. But before we do that, first of all, make sure you have your card in there. Because if you get everything installed and then find out that you don't have your card installed, it's going to suck. But you have this piece with a little bit of foam on it and a USB-C, and it plugs into the back of the camera. So now you have the power for the Insta360 Go, as well as a full USB connection, which runs to this USB port right here which allows you to be able to connect to everything on the camera with USB without ever ever actually, actually having to take the camera out of the entire bird. So that's pretty cool. Unfortunately for us, this uh, camera was damaged in a previous filming accident. So you might see that in the final results of this video. But what we're gonna do is then plug in this cable for the USB connection, drop the whole camera in. You can see that there's this plastic part. So you need the screen up and then the, the lens will be exposed through the bottom. Kind of got to wiggle 
the cable in there and just get it to seat down in there. And eventually you'll get the camera kind of seated down in place. You can see that poking through nicely in the bottom and then also on the top. And then we're gonna take our top plate, put it over top, and now we're gonna screw this whole thing down in place. So then once you get this fully installed, just take a look and make sure that everything is nice and pushed down so that nothing is gonna be coming up above the lens because like anything that comes up above like where this lens can see is gonna be visible in the, the camera. So you wanna have, make sure that everything is pushed down as far as possible so that those lenses are as exposed as possible. With that, we've got the camera installed. Now let's just show you how to do the battery. Just reach in here and make sure that these uh, cables are up and out of the way. And then you're gonna push through the entire lead so that's all the way in. Grab the cable. Make sure it's up and out of the way. It's kind of a pain to get these in. So typically what I'll do is I'll leave these installed and then use some extra leads to just be able to charge the whole drone without having to take the batteries out. It just makes things makes life a lot easier. Just push them in as far as possible. This is probably my least favorite part about this whole thing is the battery situation. But I mean, it's clever in the way that they've got it set up because it's probably the best balance of weight possible for something like this. But there's no, definitely no easy way to work with that. And then we'll be able to plug it in and fly. I'm gonna go ahead and run DVR alongside of the Insta360 video. And I'm gonna make sure that these cables are all nice and shielded from the lenses. So I'm just kind of wedging them down in, making sure that everything is nice and secure against that. Give the lenses a nice little last wipe, and then we can power on the Insta360 camera. Again, without a battery, magically, because it is fully protected. It's nice that you can do an arm check here in the box with it. Uh, though I wouldn't recommend taking out of there, but just being able to have that there, have the camera protected, and being able to do some basic checks like that is super handy which they kind of thought of with the box. So I keep the box with me when I'm using this drone. You have to be able to kind of hand launch this because we don't want to take off from the ground because otherwise it'd be sitting on the thing. So maybe like a pillow or something like that. I'm going to go ahead and hand launch it because that's how I feel like operating. Okay, we're in the air. Of course, Kyle is going to come chase us, but that's okay. So with this drone, it's definitely underpowered compared to a lot of drones. And that's, you know, for a good reason. It's not really designed to be like a super high performance thing. It's, it's a 360 camera in the sky. So I'm running it at probably, oh, I would say 60% throttle. So as a result, it definitely underperforms from what you'd expect. It actually has caused, like the reason that there's a scratch on this lens is because we accidentally ran the throttle too low at takeoff. And as a result, we accidentally put the drone into the ground and it ended up having a bit of a, a bit of a crash. So. But yeah, the other thing that you have to kind of think about is like what, what's going to look good in, in, in 360 mode? So like you got to think about like what's below you, what's above you, what's going to look good combining all of those different things. Uh, so right now I would imagine that we're looking at Kylo or now I'm going over this particular pine tree, maybe down so that you kind of get some cool tiny planet effect. But it's just a 360 camera in the sky. So you kind of think a little bit differently while you're flying, which I think is, is fun. It's a unique, different way to look at things. So this is full throttle here. <laughs> Not a lot to give. Let's go out to the end of the dock here. Let's see if we can get Kyla to jump off the dock after us. get it just trying to think through like what's gonna look really cool with a 360 camera anyway I just kind of landed that the neighbors were out and they had their dog out and I just didn't want 
my dog to get the idea that he could go hang out with their dog without their permission. So I <laughs> just landed over there and uh, managed the situation really quick. We'll be right back with you after these messages. Anyway, reactions to the first flight is that it's definitely underpowered. And, and I, I think that's okay, right? You've got these really thin motors that are there designed to be that small to fit between the seam lines of the camera. Uh, we'll have to take a look at the footage to see if we actually hit all the seam lines. But I mean, in terms of like its balance in the air, it feels great. Like it flies nice and smooth. The tune feels really good. So yeah, I think it performs or its level of performance is within the range that it's supposed to be, right? It's not supposed to be extremely fast or extremely high performing. Uh, it's, it's supposed to be able to be a 360 camera in the air and you can move the camera around wherever you want, look at whatever you want. And so to that end, I think it's definitely nailing that in terms of like where it should be. One of the accessories that Newbie Drone sends along with this is this little protector here that just kind of barely sits in between the uh, lens and the ground. So it's not an amazing thing, it's not clear, so you can't leave it on there while you're flying, but you can at least set the drone down without scratching up the lens, or at least scratching it up further than I already have. So I'm gonna be able to set this down and get some cool B-roll of it uh, without having to worry too much about scratching something up. Okay, so now that we've got the shot, we've flown around this space, gone over the flag, flown by the dogs, all that stuff. Let's pull it into the Insta360 Studio and show you how we work with this file, what this footage looks like, and then kind of give you some ideas of like what you could do with it. Okay, so we've got the clip imported now into the Insta360 Studio, which is the computer app. There's a version of it for your phone as well. Both are really, really good. I prefer the computer version just because I prefer working on a computer. But if we scrub through the footage here, we can see you know, the drone flying through the air, see what Kylos is chasing, all that good stuff. Uh, and then we have the ability to pan the shot around. And you can see that, um, unfortunately, I've got a little bit of a scratch on the bottom of my lens. Um, so we're gonna see that. Uh, and that's just an unfortunate reality of having worked with this. But if you look around, there's no drone visible, which is so cool. It's just a camera in the sky, there's nothing but just the world around you. And I don't know, it just it just creates some insane opportunities. Like you can, you know, then punch in and zoom in and use that. You could do the lock direction, which means it's always gonna kind of follow forward. So like, you know, I could point it in a direction and it's gonna keep looking that way. So if we wanted to watch Kylo, you know, cause he's generally behind the drone, or we could just have it look straight down and just see him goofing around having a good time, see this tree. I like punching out a little bit for that tiny planet effect and seeing, you know, all of the trees just shoot down into the distance. Kylo, come here, up, no, come. Come here, up. Hi, bud. What are you doing? Now I'm all wet. But yeah, it just creates some awesome opportunities to be able to shoot with the actual camera, like the entire drone being fully hidden from camera and you have you just get some really really cool stuff so i don't know what all of the opportunities are like i i still haven't had a chance to be super creative with it to figure out like what are the coolest things that i can do you can see you know so we maybe we wanted to zoom in and see kylo and kira chasing the drone we could lock direction and we can then keyframe it so like i could put a keyframe here i want the camera to be looking that way and then the next shot I want it to instead be looking up at the clouds, put another keyframe there, scroll back, and now it's gonna transition from one spot to the other while still never seeing the drone. Now, that being said, well, it does a really good job of hiding the drone, it's not always perfect. Um, and I think that in, in reality, there, it's always, there's, it's, it's really, really hard to make sure it's fully hidden, but you can make sure that things are hidden. But right here, you can actually see a little piece of the edge of the frame. Something is getting in the way. So we need to be a little bit more careful about how we mount the camera. It's just really hard to get everything exactly right. Um, so now we're gonna look back and we can see Kylo. He's still thinking about jumping after the drone. I was trying to get him to jump in after it, but he didn't. <laughs> and then, you know, now zoom out. And you got this, again, fisheye view. You can kind of do like an invert fisheye, which looks pretty bizarre. I don't know, like there's, the, the, the opportunities are literally, you know, you can put the camera, point the camera anywhere you want. And I, to be honest, like run out of ideas sometime because I just am not super creative in that way. I don't always know exactly what the ideas are to use, but what I'm saying is you can fly the whole flight, 
capture everything around you and then decide what that framing all looks like afterwards. And I think there's a lot of power in that, a lot of value in that. So here in this circumstance, I ended up having to land it because I was worried about uh, Kylo getting uh, into the neighbors. He's just, he likes to go play with their puppy, but they don't really want him playing with their puppy. So I put it down on the ground. But I just wanted to give you a kind of sense of what kind of cool opportunities filming in 360 with no drone visible can create. And uh, so I think, thanks Kylo for being a model here for filming. I hope this gives you a good sense of the kinds of shots that you can get with the Invisa 360 using the Insta360. But before we go too far forward, let's rewind a bit to when I had the chance to use the Invisa 360 on a couple commercial jobs. First was for Coasting Thunder, which we have a bunch of videos coming to the channel soon about. It's, uh, it's a ways out still, but we're, we're getting there. And then the second commercial shoot that I got to use this on was for a event called Boulder Dash, where we actually had a chance to kind of do some setup, talk about the drone, how we were gonna use it, and then show you some of the footage that we captured during the event. In kind of interest of like continuing to kind of play with cinematic tools and stuff like that, we wanted to try out a new uh, drone, the uh, new newbie drone Infinity 360 drone. This bad boy houses an Insta 360 1R in the center of everything. Its seam line cuts out the entire drone. So we should be able to get a perfect crystal clear 360 view of everything that's happening at the race. We only have uh, one set of batteries for it, so we're just gonna give it like, a go for one round. And I'm gonna kind of stay a little bit higher because I really don't want it to get hit with a water balloon. So I'm gonna stay high and back a little bit and just kind of cruise along the thing. And we'll see what we can do with it in post to get some cool 360 views out of it. We did our first flight here with the Newbie Drone Invisa 360. Uh, you know what? It's not too bad. It, it flies at like 60% throttle, so I'm doing a lot of work to make sure that it's staying in the air, but I kind of just kept it up a little higher, a little further back, flew over the flags instead of right down in where things are going, because I just did not want to get pegged with a water balloon. I was able to get through the course nice and easy, fly all the way down and chase the guys all the way through. So I'm excited to be able to use that to look around, pan around, do tiny planet views, all that kind of good stuff that you would want to do with a 360 drone and camera that is like fully in the air that no, you can't see anything about the drone. So other than the 60% throttle thing and it kind of just being a little bit underpowered, it, was, it flies great. Like a little bit of wind is happening right now and it still just kind of gets batted around a little bit. You know, it's so thin that it just cuts right through the air. So stoked about how that's gone so far and uh, I want to get it charged up and go again because I'm really excited about how that's going to look. I do want to give credit where it's due. I think the first time I saw a drone style like this of a, of a similar type of like, you know, hide the drone in the seam lines of the 360 camera was definitely Stan FPV. So me and Jordan Temkin had talked about doing something like it back in like 17 or 18, but there just wasn't the technology with motors at the time. But so props to him for having kind of came up with the first design for that. So I hope this video gave you a pretty good detailed overview of some of the capabilities of something like the Invisa 360. The idea of having a 360 camera in the sky has appeal in a lot of different ways, right? The ability to look anywhere, to frame anything after the fact, you just have to get the drone somewhere in position to be able to capture that, especially because you can look forwards, backwards, to the side, left, right, and it's gonna be super stabilized no matter what. I think all of that creates for some really, really cool, powerful opportunities. And I'm, I'm glad that people are starting to ask me to bring something like this to shoot so that they can get something even more unique than FPV already created creates an opportunity for. So awesome work to Newbie Drone for designing and building the Invisa 360. I love what we're doing with this. I can't wait to see more uses for stuff like this. And I hope that you guys found this video interesting. If you decide to purchase anything like this, please consider using the affiliate links in the description below. It helps support the channel, allows me to be able to make more videos like this. And always, we've got some awesome merch for nerk.tv. Uh, we've got these awesome, uh, super crunchy, you know, go travel anywhere hats, the most comfortable hat in the world, as well as a couple t-shirts, sweatshirts, and some awesome snapback hats. And then again, also check out Newbie Drone to be able to see the Invisit 360 drone. Thanks everybody so much for watching. Please consider subscribing and doing all of that YouTube stuff and stay flying. It's fine.
Friday then. It's Saturday, Sunday, what? It's Friday then. Saturday, Sunday, what? Ready? Okay. So, we just did our first flight. No. We just did. Hmm. We did our first flight here with the newbie drone in Visa 360. What's up? Yeah, buddy!